immediately watched the paramedics wheel the seizing man away from the departure gate of the Newark airport. He thought it was just an unexpected bit of excitement when the gate agent lady announced there was a vacancy for any ultimate plus class double fresh patrons to upgrade. First come, first served, she purred. Bravely had to fight a military veteran for the seat, but won because ultimately he was faster than the paraplegic. Enjoy your flight, the gate agent winked as he entered the jetway. He knew it right then. They wanted him to be first class. They needed to please him. Despite years of evidence to the contrary, Bradley believed the world owed the zit-crusted, sarcastic shirt-wearing, masturbating collection of movie quotes a goddamn medal. It was luxury Bradley had never known. All the drinks were free. The air women said, sir, and here's your towel, sir, and the other passengers are complaining, sir. They were paid to smile fuller and dress tighter and be more lenient about rules. He felt like a goddamn king. He could see the cockpit opening from time to time and liked to imagine they trust him enough that he could barge in, smear his enormous porcelain face, tears, and foaming slobber all over the delicate control panel. He could picture an air marshal's taser lighting his corpse with electric life as the plane howled ever lower to obliterate Columbus, Ohio. He smiled just thinking of the jet fuel taking them in fiery baptism. He was so caught up in it, the air woman had to tap his shoulder when he didn't respond to her question. Huh? He said. Sir, I asked if you would like a rugged boy fancy kit. It's complimentary. Bradley gasped. The woman laid the kit out for him. The rugged boy fancy kit was a boutique package. The kind you had to pay $30 a month in subscription fees to receive. But here he was, getting it for free. He zipped it open. Inside a smart, space-age polymer mesh bag lie a wealth of essentials all rugged boys needed to become fancy and fresh. There were nail clippers with rose gold plating on the inlays. There was a coffee-scented beard balm, though Bradley could not grow more than fuzz despite his 37 years. There was a single mint-flavored condom branded Tugger. Later, Bradley opened and unrolled the prophylactic and spread it on the toilet seat in the cramped lavatory. He hoped whoever followed might assume he was an impressive force of sexual nature, or think anything about him, really. Finally, at the very bottom of the kit, there was a one-ounce plastic tube of lemon tinge face cream. Bradley scoffed at the tube. His face was enormous, and he knew it would take at least six, no, seven, tubes to neutralize his oily, pale skin flakes. Still, it was an impressive haul. Loot in tow, he peered back at the business class and <laughs> sneered at their common, ugly faces. He cracked the cap of his face cream and took a sniff. He involuntarily moaned. The scent alone got him riled up. During the flight, Bradley talked big, owning the confidence of which he now so abundantly dripped. He woke up a sleeping Indian man to lie and tell him this was his fourth flight this week. Ugh. He rang the air women and told them his water had to be chilled just right or he wouldn't drink it. After the flight and baggage claim, he told a geriatric man with a 20-year-old girlfriend that air travel made him dry out something fierce. No one spoke back, but he knew he made an impression. When his cousin picked him up in the taxi lane with a 1998 Oldsmobile Alero with torn seats and different colored doors, he knew, save for the kit, his life of luxury was over.
The next morning, in his cousin's apartment, his skin was, as prophesied, dry. An arid desert of hepatitis cracks and wind scorch. He climbed off the futon, scratched his belly, and waited for his cousin's roommate to leave the bathroom. Amid the lingering toilet stench of the Slavic man's strained bowel movement, Bradley opened his rugged boy fancy kit. The moment the zipper unzipped, a crisp, tantalizing scent relieved him temporarily of his grotesque surroundings. The cousin's bathroom was unsavory, coated in an inch-thick carpet of short black hairs as the family's genome was disgustingly inebriated by a grandfather's Italian stain. Yet, as the mint coffee and lemon aroma enthused him, he was back in first class. Mmm, a fancy rugged boy, he smirked. The lemon tinge facial cream was saved last of all on his duties. The pathetic thing was dwarfed in his hands. They scab-ridden minefields of red splotch allergy and simian folds. He sprayed out a healthy squeeze and rubbed about his face. When his whole face was refreshing in tingles and firming agreeably, he saw whole strings of white grease still unspent in his finger gaps. He actually gasped. It lasts and lasts, he exclaimed. Never before had such a lotion impressed him. From that moment on, Bradley had developed a fierce admiration for Rugged Boy's products and its suave corporate branding. He was a rugged boy, uh huh. Bradley's cousin helped him get an interview with a temp agency, and within a week, he had a position at a printing company's front desk. The first day at his position, Bradley bragged to the strangers of his consumer prowess. He interrupted conversations about distantly related subjects with a topic of his face moisture and invited female employees to stroke his cheek, eager to request a finger flick of theirs in return. He was flirty, a goddamn little tease, and he loved it. Rugged Boy gave him confidence, a footstep in with the upper-ups. He even got a compliment from the chairman of New Accounts on his upper lip's cleanly glow. Goodness, what a smooth, moist upper lip, he grinned, just savoring Bradley's tantalizing smackers. Bradley used the tube for the next day, the next week, and the next month, and so on. It got to be so he had to store it standing on his cap so the lotion pooled enough for the day. He squeezed and rolled the tube and kept it flat with a clothespin. Yet, while well, he figured each day must be the tube's last, it never gave out. Just when he thought there'd be no more to give, the little sport squirted another healthy dose. Finally, he had a product who admired him, who served him so fiercely. His confidence soared to new heights his wit alone could not take him. When six months went by and still the devoted lotion vessel did not tire, Bradley declared it a miracle. It just won't give up. God damn, he's just so reliable. Bradley said one lunch, giving gender and paternal love to the brand. He beamed his consumer pride to another new hire, a fox-faced asthmatic woman who did not know Bradley's name. <laughs> that boy's a damn inspiration. What Bradley didn't know was that what he mistook for a miracle was in fact cheap import plastic. Rugged Boy's corporate benefactor, Earn Trust United, but six tons of imperfect plastic wholesale for 20 cents cheaper on the dollar than they'd normally pay. Still, they ended up firing 20 employees that year for taking phone calls on the job, often for sick children or in pursuit of less depressing work. Rugged Boy was not a boy, but a stingy bastard. The plastic in the tube had melted under the lemon tinge of the lotion, so shiny carcinogens mixed supplemental to the lotion, like grease from a manufactured prostate. 
bravely let the pilfered plastic genetic parasites fester on his skin and swore by its charm for an entire year. By the time the tube crinkled to ash a year to the day after he flew first class, Bradley saluted the tube with five fingers to his forehead, went online, and ordered two more. In three years, Bradley's face was a leaking carcinoma. When he nodded, four bulging tumors swished with liquid. As he snoozed, they wept bits of erratic bodily garbage half-translucent molars, inches of wet black hair, nails, and veiny globs of mucus. His enormous face had tripled in size, so he needed extra tubes of Rugged Boy's fiercely dependable product, just as he once predicted. Four years after that sole first-class experience, Bradley was sharing a room in a dirty New Jersey oncology ward. Weakened and misled in this Munchausen's by corporate proxy, his last words were misspelled odes written to the company over Twitter. Rugged boy, you're the best. Dying of face can er, and your cream always saves the day. Couldn't do it with OU. Day 68 of Radiatin. Loving my face for once, thanks to Rugged Boy. The light's weaker, but still I shine. Crying face emoji. Thanks at Rugged Boy. To that last tweet, given the direct reach through signifying characters, a software program running emotionless without sleep responded to Bravely. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Rugged boy never gives up. Shine on, dude. It then gave him a time-sensitive link with an offer for 19 cents off his next tube. Bradley died before seeing the offer. Died before enjoying its blessings of savings. As directed jointly by his DNR and will, Bradley's body was cremated. Midway through the process, the burner shut off. The person burner waved a hand over her wet eyes from the control panel. Choking black smog had erupted from the machine, which did not look dissimilar from a pottery kiln. After the smoke cleared, the process continued, still smoking, but less so. The employees swept Bradley's ashes into a dustpan, but could not dislodge all of him from the chamber. His broad, grinning rictus was charred black into the stone basin, bubbling and smoking its afterlife fumes. It took a power washer to rub his smirk away, so Bradley's smile smiled a whole three weeks after his tumorous body choked on its beloved poison.